and now for my secret shame <laughs> all of this pretty much hi there in this video I'm gonna show you exactly how I organize all of my files and papers if you're new to this channel my name's Mel I'm a decluttering coach from Sydney Australia I do a lot of decluttering tips and organizing tips on this channel so if you're looking for some inspiration motivation and some hacks to get your home and life sorted then I'd love to have you join this community right so papers I have had lots of requests to do a paper organizing video and I did one way back when I first started my channel but the audio was really bad and while my organizing system is pretty much the same it's just been updated so I thought it was time to update the video for you and show you exactly how my papers are organized today I just want to apologize there is some banging noise in the background my neighbor is doing some hammering but today right now is the only time I've got to film this video and I just wanted to get this out for you all because so many people have requested it. All right, back to paper organizing. My basic rule of thumb when it comes to paper files is keep as little as possible. I've tried to go electronic or digital as much as possible. So things like bills I get emailed to me or I go online to look up things like banking and superannuation like retirement fund statements. And if a company must send me a paper version or something, I will either try and scan it or take a photo of it. Or if it's something that I don't need to keep like a bill, I will deal with it. I will pay it straight away and then I'll get rid of it. I don't worry too much about keeping copies of bills and things like that because when I'm paying something I can always go back into my online banking and look at my transaction history and see when I've paid a certain bill to a certain company so that is another record I just want to have lots of paper lying around that I'm always going to have to keep decluttering all of the time my second rule of thumb is to try and deal with things pretty soon after they come into my home and not let them pile up. So if I've got a bill, I'll try and deal with it within that week and then either file it away, but usually if it's a bill, I'll shred it or recycle it. Most receipts I'll keep for a few days or a few weeks if it's something that I think I need to make sure that it's not faulty or if it's closed, something that's gonna fit or be suitable. I'll keep the receipt for a short time until I know that I'm not gonna return the item item and then I'll get rid of it. So I really try and keep things filed or tucked away in a place where I know where they are and not just let things pile up in a big pile on a kitchen counter or on my desk. My third rule for dealing with papers and decluttering is to safeguard my privacy and the security of my personal details. So any pieces of paper with my name, address, any account numbers or any sort of personal or identifying information, I will shred. Again, it goes back to the previous rule of trying to deal with it as it comes in every week so that it doesn't pile up and I don't have to spend hours every couple of months or every year trying to sort out my papers and try and declutter and organize stuff all over again. So in terms of what things must be kept in paper or hard copy, I basically try and only keep things that I find the most easy thing to refer to on a paper copy rather than a digital copy and things that I'm going to refer to often or things that I legally or contractually have to keep in paper copy or keep copies of, you know, originals, things like birth certificates and things like that or legal contracts or tax information, things that I have to keep for a required period of time. So things like the contract when we bought this house and also I've kept information pertaining to our apartment when we sold it because for a time we rented it out and for some of the time it was counted as an investment property the rest of the time we lived in it things like that for tax purposes I will keep those for the certain amount of time so in Australia or in New South Wales where I live in Australia at the moment it is five years you need to check what the requirements are for the industry that you're in if you run a business or for the area or country or city or state that you live in. When you do set out to first declutter papers, particularly if you've never done this or it's been a really long time since you've done it, the best thing to do is get a big space on the floor or on a table. I find that a floor, like clear a big space on the floor is easier because you easily run out of room on a kitchen counter or table or a desk, particularly if you've got a lot of papers. And I will make labels and start making piles where I will categorize different papers. So things like household bills, things pertaining to your kids, 
like healthcare records or school papers, things like contracts, tax documents, instruction manuals for appliances and things, and I'll talk about this more in a little bit because I wanted to clutter some of mine, receipts, financial statements, correspondence such as letters from people or greeting cards, Christmas and birthday cards, things like that. So try and break down things into as many categories as you can, specific categories as you can, and then get ruthless about looking at what categories you want to keep and which ones you really need to keep and which ones you can declutter. To help you decide what to keep and what to declutter, I'm going to give you an example from my own personal paper files and show you exactly what categories I keep and how I organize them. I'm not saying that these exact categories are the ones that are going to be absolutely right for you. You need to decide that. You need to check what you're required to keep in terms of legal and tax documents and then you need to decide what's going to be easiest for you. And the first time you go through and declutter your papers you might keep more categories than I do but over time as you get used to living with less paper and getting used to using more digital files or getting more comfortable of not feeling like you need to keep so much paper and then over time like I did you could end up living with a lot less. When I first decluttered papers I still had probably twice as much as I keep now. So an overview of what I keep, I keep a whole lot of papers in this accordion file folder and these are household papers and also my personal papers. My husband keeps his papers separately and actually I need to go through and help him declutter that because he's got about 20 years of papers. So I have one of these accordion folders and as you can see it's not that full. I used to have about two of these and they were like jam packed full, so full that you couldn't even close it properly. I've got one of these file holders and I've just got some document wallets with different categories of things in them and then I've got my children's health records in these two blue books. These are something that each child gets when they're born so your baby will get one of these blue books when they're born and it basically covers medical records up until the age of five it covers all their vaccinations and things like that and my son is seven now and my daughter is three I could probably just take a few pages out of my son's book which is this one <laughs> then my daughter's book once she's turned five again I could probably just take a few copies even if I just scan them I don't need to keep paper copies in the meantime I've just kept them but but yeah, I could declutter these and just scan the papers I needed once each child has turned five. And then these two smaller A5 size document wallets. These are household receipts and these are receipts for my decluttering coaching business. So I'll start going through these in more detail. Household receipts, I keep receipts for things like appliances. If I've bought sports gear or clothes for my kids, I'll put the receipts in here. Obviously, once my kids have started to wear the clothes and things like that, I think about once a month I go through through and declutter the receipts in here so it really doesn't take me very long. With receipts they're usually printed on like a plastic coated paper so you can't, even though it's paper, you can't recycle it so I put receipts in the rubbish bin instead of putting them in my recycle bin. If there's any personal details on them then I will shred them and then throw the shredded receipt paper away. And then for my business I have to keep receipts for my business at least five years worth and I haven't been in business for five years so so far I've kept all the receipts. I have a lot of receipts that are sent to me on email because most of my business is conducted online, emails, invoices, payments, that kind of thing. So a lot of those records are online. So that is why this folder is pretty empty. And it's done by financial year. The financial year in Australia finishes on the 30th of June each year. So this is for the financial year ended 30th of June, 2020. As for what's in here, I will show you. This is my tax folder. And again, it's not very big and this actually contains at least the last five years worth of tax returns. When I actually looked back here I've actually got all of my tax assessments dating back to 2011 and I could probably declutter them because you know it's now 2020 so that is clearly I'm keeping more than five years worth. A lot of my tax information like income information, expense information, a lot of that is online these days so that is why this folder is 
not very full. A good practice for this would be to declutter it every year. So when you put the new tax return in, take out the oldest one so that you're always keeping, you know, the five, or the six years or seven years or whatever is required to keep in that folder. This booklet is one of those books with the plastic inserts. You just insert certificates and things without having to punch holes in the page. And I use this folder for things like birth certificates and our marriage certificate, things like that, official documents that I don't want to punch holes in. So I know what all those sort of more official documents are, but as you can see, it is not very thick. There's not a lot of paper in here. This is the folder where I keep the current year's tax stuff apart from the receipt. And so I actually use this folder to put all my documents in. And then this is what I take to see my tax accountant. This is a folder that I've got for my business you can see I've just got my business name on it and I really don't have a lot in here I think I've got a letter confirming when my Australian business number was registered I've got a copy of some documentation that my lawyer sent me when I was getting the terms of service and privacy policy drawn up for my website and my business and then these last two folders I've got one each for my children so the blue one for Bud my seven-year-old and the purple one for my toddler so in here I think I've got a copy of of like a yearly school report, daycare report, immunization certificates, ones that I printed off the internet because they're all stored online. I really don't have a lot in here at all but it's just handy to have a folder for each of them in case there's something which I need to file quickly away. And then everything else is kept in here. But as you can see it's not that full and I'll just tell you what the categories are that I've labeled in here. The first category is work related and that relates to when I was working in my corporate job. I recently declared things from that. There is a banking section which is really empty now because all of my banking stuff is online. There is a dental and medical section where I think I've just got copies of some receipts or like referrals. There's a section for Ernie where I pretty much have just kept his vaccination certificate and I only keep the current vaccination certificate so he gets vaccinated once a year and when I get the new vaccination certificate I put it in the folder and I take out last year's one and, and throw it away basically. I have got a section for our house. So I've got a copy of the latest pest and termite inspection. We get a pest spray and a termite inspection done every summer. So I always just keep the latest copy. I think this has been in here since we bought the house. This is like paint colours, the original paint colours and paint colours that we used when we first moved into the house. I could scan this or email this to myself. I've just been too lazy to do that. I've got a section for receipts and warranties for some really big pieces of furniture things like our leather couch and that's like an A4 size piece of paper so that's why I'm not keeping it in this smaller folder because it's something that's under warranty as well like a longer warranty. I've got a section for my car where I keep my latest registration record. The latest insurance policy for my car was emailed to me this year. So I've just kept a, a copy of that, you know, like a digital copy. So, you know, a lot of these categories are, are getting pretty empty. I've got a utilities and quotes section. So that is things for the household, like some business cards and quotes for things that we want to get done or we wanted to get done around the house. So, and you know what, again, I've just been too lazy to scan and file these on my computer, but I really should. And then I've just got a couple of little sentimental kind of papers. But I think if I really tried, I could probably get this accordion folder down to one of these and get rid of this. That's how minimal I'm starting to get. I've just had this folder for about five years, so I just keep using it because it's there. And now for my secret shame. <laughs> These are all our household manuals, like for appliances and things. And I need to go through and declutter these. It is quite a substantial pile because, again, I've been a bit lazy and I just haven't gone around to decluttering them. And I have to say, I do prefer reading a paper manual than looking at one on, you know, like an iPad or something as a PDF. But the amount of times I refer to this stuff is so small. This is my husband's one. It's like all the outdoor stuff, the tool, the barbecue. This is all his stuff, so I'm not allowed to declutter that. To give you an idea of the sorts of things I've got, I've got my Kindle manual, which I know how my Kindle works and I can look that up online. My Dyson vacuum, my Dyson hot and cool fan and heater and air purifier, my daughter's tricycle. I honestly don't know why I thought I needed to keep that but I can probably toss that right now. 
the manual for my pram, our brawn thermometer that you stick in the kids ear to take their temperature. This is like baby and kids. Kitchen manuals, again I have a feeling that most of this can be looked up online so that is what I'm going to do. My slow cooker book, that's manuals. Other household things like our ceiling fans, there's only like five or six buttons on the remote control for the ceiling fan so I really don't know why I've kept this. I should look that up online just in case, you don't need to keep the hard copy. If you want an actual training from me, like a free paper decluttering and organizing training, I actually have my three part video decluttering training course, which you can access through my website. If you go to my website, you can actually sign up and get an email to you today. So I'll leave a link down below for that. I'll also leave a link to a video over here that I did recently about how I organize papers in my kitchen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Oh my god, that digging is so loud. I've got like a pick in that digging in the garden. <sighs>